Hello, and welcome to the Knit and Grace podcast. Let's talk about my 2024 goals. Welcome or welcome back if you're a returning viewer. If you're new here, my name is Mia and I'm the maker behind and Grace. And here on this channel, we get up to a lot of different things that are fiber arts related, primarily knitting, but also I am a fledgling uh, spinner. So eventually maybe there will be some spinning content here on the channel. And I also often feature my sewing makes um, in separate episodes here on the channel as well. I am living in northern New Jersey with my husband and our two cats, and yeah, um, this is just a little bit about me and who I am as a maker if you are new here. And if you are, thank you for clicking on this video and welcome. Um, so today I wanted to bring you another sort of 2024 goals slash intentions video. I did put one of these out at the beginning of 2023 and, um, you know, definitely seem to have a good reception to that video and to the idea and also to the prompts. So I thought that I would sit down and chat with you about my goals when it comes to my making, but also specifically, more specifically, my knitting um, in today's podcast episode. Um, so if that sounds like something that you are interested in, definitely grab a cup of something cozy and we can sit down for a little bit of a chat. So first I'll start with what I'm wearing since I'm sure I will get questions about that. And this is the Directional Pullover by Amy Schur, which is currently in testing. It should be released in the next couple of weeks after you see this video. So I will link my Ravelry project page down below so that you can see all of the details of my pullover. And then of course, once the pattern is released out into the world, it will be featured on the next podcast episode. I also want to address the fact that um, it is winter in the Northeast and uh, I am sitting here with artificial lighting. I typically don't like to film with artificial lighting, but such is life. And since this is sort of just a, a sit down video um, and it shouldn't be distorting any colors of anything, I figured that um, filming a little later in the day would be totally fine. So hope that isn't too jarring for you. Um, I had to, luckily my overhead light has like different uh, temperatures for the lighting but I had to like fuss with it a little bit to figure out what the right temperature was so hopefully I'm not too blown out which can happen uh, since uh, I have long lost my tan and I can definitely tell I am very pale <laughs> right now so this is uh, my normal skin color I guess um, when I am not tan. But, um, and if you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, the way that we are going to structure this video, and as always, I will have timestamps below um, with regard to each portion of the video. But first, I'm going to talk about three prompts um, that are making related. Then I am going to talk about my goals. So sort of two main sections of today's video. So um, some prompts that I am, you know, 
sort of sharing with you all and I welcome you all to um, maybe sit with them and think about them yourselves and even share in the comments if you feel um, moved to do so. And then we can talk about the actual goals and what hopefully you all will help keep me accountable when it comes to my goals for 2024. So getting right into the prompts, uh, these are going to be the same prompts that I featured in last year's videos, um, or video I should say, and there are three props. So the first one is, what would you like to change about the way that you approached crafting in the last year? The second one is, what would uh, what is one thing that worked for you in the way that you approached crafting in the last year? And then the third prompt is, what would you like to bring into the new year with regard to your crafting? So the first prompt is, you know, reflecting on the last year. Um, 2023 was definitely a year. <laughs> and I think that that was reflected in my crafting. And so that's kind of why I say that laughingly. Um, unfortunately, we had some pretty traumatic tragedies in my family. We also had some major drama in our family and family fallouts and, you know, nothing that I would ever share. Um, but it was a very drama filled year. It was also, um, I was promoted at the beginning of the year and it was my first full year sort of stepping into this new role in my job that, um, um, you know, I very happily took on halfway through last year. And so it was a very hectic year. So for those of you who don't know, um, I work in HR and um, I transitioned from a more operations generalist role to a role within HR technolo technology managing change. So change management, communications and training. Um, and so while the role has been extremely rewarding and definitely something that I was looking forward to and have enjoyed. It's also a new role and then also is a project based role. So my life tends to get very hectic around deadlines. So all of these things to say that sort of my mental state was a bit manic several times throughout the year. And definitely was reflected in my making. So, you know, whether it was at the beginning of the year, I kind of was over consuming. So I was buying a lot of yarn, buying a lot of fabric, kind of, you know, that kind of thing. And I was still producing a lot, but I definitely produced the majority of my items, I want to say toward the second half of the year. And so I think when I said to myself, like, no, look, you went into this year wanting to be more intentional about you're making and wanting to use down more of your stash than you brought in. I didn't have like a no buy year or anything like that in place, but I did want to, you know, use down my stash. Um, I had to kind of like reset halfway through the year and just say like, okay, no more like yarn buying for a little bit. And then I think that the the sort of like mania, hyperfixation, just, you know, anxious energy, then instead of being funneled into shopping, was funneled into knitting things and finishing things and finishing a lot of things. So that's one thing that I would like to change about last year was, you know, kind of that frenetic energy when it came to my crafting. And I will say, that's always gonna be there um just to be completely honest with you all and i think i have shared this here on the channel as well as on instagram a lot I'm, I'm a lot more open about my mental health struggles um i do struggle with anxiety and you know i am neurodivergent and i hyper fixate and i hyper focus and i you know have some obsessive tendencies and so my mental health is always going to be reflected very much in my crafting, especially because my crafting has been historically a solace. And that's actually why I started knitting. If you all don't know this, the history of how I started knitting, 
I started knitting in college as a way to cope with OCD that I was um, dealing with at the time that was being caused by my anxiety. So I was having severe anxiety, which was then was then triggering obsessive behavior, um, you know, which I'm not going to talk about in depth here. But you know, there were there were compulsions and obsessive behavior that I was dealing with. And I found knitting as a way to deal with that. And ever since then, I think knitting um, has been a very huge help for me when it comes to my mental health struggle. So I think that hopefully in 2024, you know, just in general, I think that, you know, with my making, um, while it can sometimes, no, it can more often than not be a, a coping mechanism for my mental health, um, sometimes it can actually become spiral into something that then is an issue. So that then my knitting itself becomes an obsession. Um, and so that's something that I always have to strike a fine balance with and so I think that that's something that I wasn't 100% great with in 2023 and I was very much aware of that and it's something that I you know worked through with my therapist and all of that but I want to try to you know as much as we can't control whatever is going on around us trying to keep that frantic anxious energy out of my knitting practice as much as possible um, for 2024. So of course, my knitting helps is a coping mechanism, it's going to help when I am feeling that way, but trying to keep it from being the other way around, right, where then my anxious energy feeds into sort of this need to finish things and this need to um, over consume or, you know, hyper fixate on finishing things and more and more and more. So that's one thing that I want to sort of change about last year. So the second prompt is what is one thing that worked about the way that I approach crafting last year. And I think that at the beginning of the year sitting down and you know sort of thinking about the fact that I wanted to be much more intentional with my knitting um, and my making practice in general as well just helped me overall so that even when I was kind of in that state where maybe I was a little bit more um, sort of hyper fixated or whatever it might be I was still approaching things with some sort of intentionality so you know I was still being mindful of how much yarn I was inviting into my home or how much fabric I was inviting into my home um I definitely focused on you know being more intentional about the fit of my garments that's something that I think I really really mastered in 2023 I started sort of down that path in 2022 but really mastered it in 2023 when it comes to fitting my garments and choosing the right size and taking the time to swatch and make sure that the finished project was what I ultimately wanted it to be so even in the middle of maybe sometimes being hyper fixated or a little bit more anxious energy I still always approached each project in that way sort of thinking about what the project was, thinking about what I wanted it to be, um, what role I wanted it to fit in my in my wardrobe, and then ultimately how I would get the best fit. Um, I think that that is definitely something that worked for me really, really well in um, 2023. So just that overall intentionality. And so the third prompt is, what would you like to take into the new year as it relates to your crafting? And that's kind of really it, right? I want to make sure that I continue that intentionality. I continue to sort of sit through that process and sit down with each project and really properly plan each out. Um, I hope to be much more intentional with using up my stash this year. Um, and a lot of that too is actually kind of going to be forced upon me because if you've been following me for a while, you know, for the past couple of months, I've chatted about the fact that my husband and I are moving. Um, so when you all see this, I will be about a week away from moving into our new apartment and we are downsizing significantly from about 1600 square feet to 600 square feet. 
So um, a lot of this is also just the fact that I won't have space for things. Um, but I will say I've always been intentional about going through my things and making sure that as things no longer suit me or no longer fitting in my wardrobe, no longer kind of, um, you know, meeting my needs. I've always been someone who very easily and very readily um, sort of let's go, let, let's go of wardrobe items. I think that also comes from just growing up in my culture and, you know, having family in a third world country and obviously, you know, kind of like every season my mom would sit down with us and we would go through things and see what no longer fit us and kind of things and like we would send it to our, you know, family members or cousins or whatever it might be so that other people could get used to that. So I've always been someone in that respect that every season, every year I kind of look at what I have and, you know, kind of um, not dispose of but you know sort of say goodbye to what no longer serving me so um, I think that the move the, the the move to the 600 square feet from a wardrobe perspective won't be as big of a deal it might just be from a stash perspective if we're completely honest because I think um, as many of you know kind of the knitting and the buying of the yarn are two separate hobbies and so I think that that's where I love seeing a full shelf of yarn, but it's not just because, you know, it, it's not really like an, a, a consumerism thing, right? It's just, it's creativity. I see the yarn and it just sparks my creativity or I like at any time if I wanted to just cast something on, I could go to my yarn cubbies and find yarn for a project there. So I love that aspect of it. And I think that I've gotten my stash to a really good point where I am happy with pretty much everything that's in my stash. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm taking more of that intentionality into 2024 and, you know, continuing that journey of making sure that I'm 100% happy with the projects that I'm making. Because that's another thing too, right? In the past, maybe sometimes I wouldn't frog something if I just had some doubts about it. And now I'm like, no, okay, if I am spending all this time working on it, I'd rather frog it now or rip back now than have a garment that I'm not going to wear or that I have to frog an entire garment or something like that. So just want to continue that, you know, intentionality and, um, and whatnot into the new year. And so now we are talking about the goals for 2024 and I have four goals for the year and the main one being, drum roll please, a no buy year or I should more and more correctly say an extremely low buy year. So it's not going to be 100% no buy. Um, I do have some exceptions that are allowable and um, but for the most part I do not want to introduce any new yarn into my stash in 2024 and so um, in addition to that kind of a you know a kind of general target that I'm hoping for is to get uh, about six sweaters quantity of yarn out of my stash. So I'm not 100% fixed to the six sweaters quantity. I think that that's just a little bit of a reasonable um, amount given the number of sweater quantities of yarn that I have in my stash, which are probably closer to like 20 sweaters quantity, 15 to 20. Um, so I'd like to get rid of about six sweaters quantities worth of yarn from my stash, but in general, it is going to be a no buy year. And so the parameters around that is I cannot introduce any new yarn into my stash. If I am choosing a pattern, it has to be a pattern that is within the yarn that I already have in my stash um, and with a couple of exceptions. And so the exceptions will be for yarn festivals. So I do plan on attending one yarn festival for sure, which is Flock in August, and maybe Rhinebeck. I probably will do Rhinebeck just because it is so close to me, 
but I highly doubt that I'd be buying yarn at Rhinebeck this year. I do want to kind of focus on my spinning a little bit more this year, so maybe I might do Rhinebeck for, like, you know, fiber. Um, but so fiber festival yarns do not count. Also, souvenir yarns do not count. Um, although, for the most part, I don't think we have any trips planned this year other than flock we have a couple small trips but not anything that i would consider getting souvenir yarn for like we we always go down to see our grandparents in february in hilton head um and things like that so souvenir yarn also doesn't count but if we go somewhere where you know it's kind of a new place to us and and i might want to get a souvenir skein or two that won't count Additionally, I will be ordering the 2024 Advent from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. So if you are follow, a follower of the channel, you know that I am working through the Woodland Ripple Blanket uh, using my Advent Minis. And so that will be ordered for the year just because I would like to finish that blanket this year. And so my goal is actually 2024 being the last set of Advents um, that goes into that blanket. And then lastly, um, any gifted yarn. So if I'm gifted any yarn by any yarn brands in collaboration for, you know, a test knit or anything like that, those will not count toward my no buy for the year. So um, I'm thinking that, you know, setting these parameters will really help me um, use up quite a bit of my stash. And so that's why I kind of came up with that you know, sort of give or take six sweater quantities worth of yarn. And so my second goal for the year is to do less test knits. Um, I think that was my goal for 2023 as well. And I will say, I think I did do less test knits in 2023, although I did still do quite a few. Um, and yeah, this kind of goes back to... Um, that intentionality and again not saying that I'm not intentional with my test knits when I sign up for a test knit it is something that I would 100% knit um, even once we're, it's released but I think where signing up for less test knits comes for me is more of like that instant gratification kind of thing and just saying like hey if I really love this as the designer is sneaking sneak peeking it and as it's in testing, then I will just buy the pattern. So that doesn't necessarily mean I won't knit the pattern, but you know, I'll just have a lot less deadlines on myself. And I just think that while I work well when I have deadlines, when I have too many deadlines looming over, the way that sometimes I will sign up for multiple test knits that are due like at the same time, it's very stressful, right? Um, because it's a commitment you're making and you need to follow through on that, you know, unless there are extremely extenuating circumstances. So I think that just signing up for less test knits in general, but I think more so taking that a step further is, and not having multiple test knits at once is um, what's going to work for me. Now, at the beginning of the year, I do have a couple of test knits that I've already um committed to in 2023 so those will run this course there's one that's due at the beginning of february there's one that's due in march as well so essentially for the first quarter of the year i will not be signing up for any additional test knits um and then i think in general the fact that i have to use yarn that is already in my staff will also limit the number of test knits that i can sign up for because if i see a test knit i love it and i don't have yarn in my stash for it then i can't sign up for it so i think that naturally that will happen on its own so my third goal is kind of um, one that's knitting related and kind of one that's related to my first prompt. And it's just um, maybe not necessarily less knits in general uh, because I did take breaks and there were like I would have weeks at a time where I wasn't knitting and things like that. But I want to maybe knit a few less large projects. So if um, you have been following me for a while, you know that I typically knit about three to four samples a year, which tend to be larger projects, and those have pretty tight um, deadlines, so they're usually turnaround time in about six weeks. Um, and so in addition to knitting three samples last year, I also knit 16 sweaters. <laughs> 
which is a lot or 16 garments I should say not some not all of them were full sweaters so um versus like the year before in 2024 or 2022 I had knit 25 like items total including garments so I think that for this year I do want to cut down on knitting some like knitting less garments so um, I think that that's easy to say, like even if I say I want to get rid of six sweater quantities worth of yarn, um, six is definitely a lot less than 19 garments that I knit last year. So I just kind of want to, again, just be a little bit slower with my knitting um, and things like that. So I, I won't say that it's less knits in general because my next goal will tell you like, hey Mia, didn't you just say that you want to knit less knits? So the overall number may not be less, but I think that just, um, you know, knitting less large garments and probably just the knitting less test knits and the, the buying less yarn, it's just going to be the year of less for me. <laughs> I think um, and all of this I think is you know also with the life step that we're taking now as a couple where we're kind of taking a step back to take a step forward for our future it's kind of the way that I'm thinking about my knitting as well like I want to take a little bit of a step back to sort of get back to that place where not that my knitting has not been enjoyable because this 100% has been enjoyable but get back to that place where my knitting is more of a like you know I don't know and then also just make more room for other things like my spinning I really 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 want to like actually spin yarn this year I want to spin my first skein this year you know so I want to leave room for some of my other crafts I want to sew a lot more I didn't do as much sewing in 2023 because I did a lot more knitting where in 2022 I did so much sewing um so I do want to add to my hand sewn wardrobe as well so it's kind of like making room so doing less of one to make room for others um is kind of the way that I'm thinking about that goal if that makes sense and my fourth and last goal for the year is to use up my single sock skeins so talking about souvenir skeins and talking about you know kind of um just the way that we go about you know our knitting practices um a lot of the times too when i'm testing because you know you get sort of um estimate yardage you end up with extra yarn also i am a short person i always end up with extra yarn because i always crop things or you know alter things or whatever it might might be excuse me um so i do so i have over time also, I've been knitting for over 15 years, and I have single sock skeins that are over 10 years old in my stash. So again, because it's like kind of your souvenir thing, right? When you're out and about and you're, you find a yarn shop and you don't necessarily have an intention for something, it's always just been very easy for me to get a 100 gram fingering weight sock skein and, you know, knit up a pair of vanilla socks as kind of like your souvenir memory socks. But the problem is, is I keep amassing these single skeins and I don't knit them so that's kind of my goal for this year so use up my single sock skeins and specifically because my note commute is changing and I will not will no longer be able to knit large items on my commute I am going to commit to knitting one pair of socks per month um this is also going to help fill a need in my sock drawer um my husband over the past two years has felted a few of my socks. I want to say like a good seven pairs of socks. So we're not talking about a small number. We're talking about a very large number of socks. Granted, I've been knitting for a very long time, so I have a very large number of socks, but I feel like I need to replenish my sock drawer. And so this is kind of like operation sock drawer, if you will. So um, use up those single skeins and also replenish some socks in my sock drawer. So I am hoping to knit 12 pairs of socks. So that's going to be 24 socks um, for the year or one pair per month, essentially. Um, it may not end up being one pair per month. I might end up 
finishing two pairs in a month and then not one in the next month but I just want to sort of that's kind of the mindset behind it is one pair per month um so 12 pairs of socks and use up those single sock stains that I have in my stash that I've been meaning to knit socks up with so that is all that I have for you all today. I hope that my ramblings made sense somewhat. I did kind of come into this, I mean, I did um, prepare somewhat, right, in terms of what I was thinking about talking about, but you know, with all of these things, I just kind of talk and ramble on. Um, but I hope that um, I made some sort of sense in this video. And I hope that you enjoyed sort of hearing my process of how I'm going into 2024, and how I just sit down and write my goals in general. This is kind of the the general um, idea of how I write my goals in my regular life as well, you know, where I kind of reflect on the last year, think about what I want to continue doing in the new year and what I want to do more of in the new year um, when I'm setting my goals. So it's nice to do the same when it comes to my making, specifically my knitting, since this is primarily a knitting channel. But um, yeah, let me know, you know, how you approach going into the new year. Um, I am definitely not one that makes resolutions. I think resolutions are made to be broken. Um, goals are nice because you have mileposts that you can um, kind of measure against and of course just goals you can always change as needed so I like goals as opposed to resolutions um so how do you go about setting your goals for the year and if you want to either again reflect on any of the prompts that I um sort of shared earlier or want to share some of your goals please do so in the comments down below this video as always, if you're not already subscribed, please be sure to do so and click that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a video. Um, please also like and comment. All of the engagement on these videos really helps me out and helps me grow my channel so that people who are also interested in my content will find me and my channel. And then of course, there are always a couple of ways that you can support the channel should you wish to in the description box below. So with that, I will leave you until the next video, which will be my podcast episode, which again, as a reminder, will go up the second Sunday of February instead of the normal first Sunday, um, just because we are moving that first weekend of February. And until then, please be sure to take care of yourselves, your loved ones, and each other. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.